Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. I can't believe it's been two months since I did one of these sidebar conversations. So I've got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So have you had a chance to watch all of the scrap bin challenge videos yet? So far we've got 37 videos on the playlist, and that totals up over four hours of scrap projects that you can watch. And get some ideas on what to do with the scrap that's in your workshop. I want to thank Peter Brown and April Wilkerson and Jack Howling and all the other woodworkers who conspired with us to release scrap bin videos on the same day. And also thanks to everyone else who uh, accepted the challenge and uploaded their videos and photos of their scrap projects. And uh, still, if you come up with a scrap idea, please upload a video of it or a photo to one of our Facebook pages and we'll share it with everybody else so they can all benefit from your idea as well. My project was this sawdust art vase that's similar to the sand art and it was a lot of fun to make on each type of wood. I made about 10 or 15 passes on the table saw to get enough sawdust. Uh, it depended on how thick or how wide the board was. but. A few tips would be to make sure you alternate dark and light colors to have the best effect. Uh, up in this area I used kind of similar colors and it didn't turn out that great right here. But, um, and also the sawdust settles a lot in the vase so you want to pack it down as you go. And once you get to the top you want to make sure you can seal it with something. Uh, in the video I just put this on with a hot glue gun. Um, but I was afraid it would come off too easily if somebody just grabbed it by the top. So I ended up using epoxy to make sure this is securely fastened onto this face. Um, and it might be a good idea to use some kind of container that's got a lid that you can tighten on top. Uh, that might be easier. But this was a lot of fun, so uh, go out and buy a vase and try it. Check out my new shirt from Dale over at Beaver Valley Woodworking. A lot of us woodworkers have been showing our support by ordering each other's t-shirts. So if you'd like a t-shirt from your own favorite woodworker, see if they have a store and place an order and help them out. Uh, I'll include a link to Dale's store in the video description. I've also had some requests for my t-shirts and I usually print my own with the silt screen I made in a previous video. But uh, to make things easier so I don't have to print the shirts and ship them, I went ahead and set up a Spreadshirt store. It's the CarmichaelWorkshop.Spreadshirt.com and you can head over there and I've got a lot of different designs that I've come up with uh, that I think are pretty funny and pretty cool. So check those out and see if there's anything you'd like to order. Well, I made it up to the Woodworking in America conference last month and it was a blast. I didn't pay to attend any of the classes, I just paid to get into the marketplace where I could walk around and look at tools and try them out. But uh, the great thing about it was I was able to meet a lot of the other YouTube woodworkers and we hung out and talked and uh, Steve Ramsey had his Mimo meetup. Uh, so we all went over there and had a good time and I actually got to meet a lot of my viewers in person. So if you were there, it was great meeting you and I just had a blast and I hope to do it again someday. Um, if you have a chance to go to a Woodworking in America conference, uh, I would definitely go uh, just to meet people and network and also you can look at tools and try them out, especially if there's not a Woodcraft or Rockler store or other woodworking store and you can only see a lot of the tools in catalogs and online. It's really neat to see them in person and you can try them out as well. And also they have lots of classes you might be interested in as well. Uh, I think they're hinting at where the location is going to be for 2015, uh, but I'm not sure if they've announced it yet. So listen out for that. Since I drove my car up to Woodworking in America, I was able to take my Wacko Woodworker Whirly gig up there. And I got Lady Shaughnessy and Steve Ramsey to sign next to their pictures. Uh, Matt Vanderlist was also there and I wish I would gotten his signature while I was there. Uh, so I just still need to get his and Mark Spagnolo and Norm Abram to sign my Wacko Woodworker. But I really need to thank Lanny Shaughnessy and Steve Ramsey for hosting that Whirly Gig Wars contest every year. And I also want to thank Microjig for putting up uh, prizes every year. Uh, I won these grip blocks in this year's contest with these deflectors. 
and these will come in very handy in my shop and I've already used them on some projects. So uh, thanks to Steve and Lainey and Microjig. Well, the woodworking shows have already started up again and I think they go to a different city every weekend. So check their website for the schedule to see if they're coming to a town near you. I think they come here to Atlanta in March and I plan to be there all weekend helping out with our Gwinnett Woodworkers booth. So if you come to the Atlanta show, be sure to stop by, look me up, and say hello. Did you see my invisible birdhouse that I made for the summer's woodworking birdhouse contest? Uh, basically, I made a bluebird house and covered it in mirrors so it would reflect its surroundings and appear invisible. And I got a lot of comments on whether the birds would even see it or find it or crash into it. Um, but I haven't seen any bluebirds visit any of my birdhouses out back this year. So I brought it inside and I'm going to wait until the spring and put it out and see if I can get some birds to visit it. Thanks to Brian over at Summers Woodworking for hosting the birdhouse contest. And congrats to everyone who entered and everyone who won prizes. Uh, there were a lot more entries this year than there were last year. So good job, everybody. Okay, y'all, a couple of really exciting things happened to me over the last couple of months. If you subscribe to Wood Magazine, you may have noticed my thumb and my index finger or featured on page two of the September 2014 issue. Uh, they're talking about my tongue drum video that I made. And also, in the October 2014 issue, Steve Ramsey wrote an article about make your woodworking make money. It's about selling your woodworking projects. And he asked me for some input and I sent him some pictures of my drumstick pins that I've been making and selling on Etsy, uh, as well as a bunch of other tips on selling your woodworking projects. Uh, this is one of my drumstick pins that I make from broken drumsticks. Uh, so if you'd like to check those out, head over to my Etsy store and I've got a few posted there. My mom is coming to visit us this weekend, and I can't wait to show her that my name is in two magazines. <laughs> I never thought that would happen. There are some really neat events coming up in November. Carl Jacobson and Alan Stratton are having a Christmas ornament challenge. And you just build a Christmas ornament and submit it for the contest, and you'll have a chance to win some really cool prizes. So uh, check the video description for the link to that. And also, Steve Ramsey and Mark Spagnolo have teamed up again for Woodworkers Fighting Cancer. And they're asking everyone to build a toy chest according to either Mark's plan and video or Steve's plan and video. And send them a photo or video of it. And both Mark and Steve and a bunch of companies they've got on board will donate to Cancer Research Institute. So that's a really great cause. So those are your two assignments for November. So get to work. And before you go, check out what happened to the rest of the leftover sawdust I had after making this sawdust art vase. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. I've got lots of different colors of sawdust left over from my Scrap Bin Challenge sawdust art project. So I thought I would suck it up in my Clearview Cyclone and see what it looks like. So let's check it out.